Hey Tom. Can I call you Tom, Mr. Jefferson? I prefer Thomas, but yes Mrs. Palin. And may I call you Sarah? Sure. So why are you talking so funny? Like you are some kind of Englishman or something. Perhaps, because I was an Englishman. Oh. Okay, so now tell me why you are standing over there under that democratic jackass. And hey out there, where's the guy I'm supposed to debate? I'm afraid that would be me, Sarah. You? But you're a Republican. Actually, no. Philosophically, I'm a Republican. That's spelled with a lower case R, but I'm a Democrat. But you founded the Republican Party. No, I know that Republicans have from time to time tried to co-opt me for their rhetorical argument, but James Madison and I co-founded the Democratic Republicans when we united in opposition now. Alexander Hamilton's fiscal policy. Later, the party gained support from opposition to John Adams' attempts to silence dissent, and Federalist policy in general. We then shortened the name to Republican, but the Republican Party to which you belong was not formed until 1854. You see, Adams was what would likely be called a conservative today, while we Republicans were liberal, though the terms would have been used in a different context in our day the issues were very different then. Soon thereafter, we became known as Democrats, and still liberal by comparison to the Whigs, though they were largely what would be termed pro-business progressives in their day. A schism in the Jackson era led to the Democrats being co-opted by Southron Democrats who were largely conservative reactionaries. Then when the new Republican Party was formed, its ideology was largely supported by the liberal thinkers of its time. While the Republican Party was soon co-opted after the Civil War as a political arm of the emerging class of industrialists, it became more progressive and increasingly pro-business, while the Democrats became increasingly reactionary. Then, as the West opened, Western progressives flocked increasingly to the Republican Party, and both parties remained largely conservative by today's standards until Franklin Roosevelt's presidency. He was a Northern Democrat, which had little in common ideologically with the Sothron Democrats, and a schism again developed during Harry Truman's term in office over the issue of lynching of blacks. At that time, Strom Thurmond attempted to break away from the Democrats, and form the Dixiecrat Party. It was however a miserable failure, which led to Dwight Eisenhower being elected. The subsequent Supreme Court decision in Brown v. the Tufika Board of Education, which desegregated the public schools, infuriated the Sothrone Democrats. Then, when Lyndon Johnson was elected and he pursued his civil rights agenda, Strom Thurmond again broke away from the Democrats, but went with the Republicans instead. This followed immediately after the Civil Rights Act of 1962. Many more conservative Democrats then followed him. By the time of the 1971 Supreme Court decision in Love v. Virginia, in which the state laws which outlawed interracial marriage were found unconstitutional, the transformation of the Republican Party was complete. I'm rather amused by the thought that it was the liberals who defended the institution of marriage in that instance. But I digress. In effect, the Republican Party which existed at the time of Eisenhower ceased to exist. While it held on to the name Republican, it effectively became the Dixiecrats. Are you trying to confuse me? Oh no. You see, at the time of the revolution, we held out that we were simply exercising our centuries-old rights as Englishmen. A rhetorically conservative argument you see. But the notion that we colonists could separate from England was unheard of and quite liberal. Oh. Okay. I guess that's why we like to refer to the intent of the Founding Fathers for our arguments. Really? And why so? Because nobody can understand what you guys really meant, and hey, I can't understand what you were saying now. So, what are you trying to say? The truth. The truth. And what would that be? I'm not sure that you are ready for it. Try me. Okay, the reactionary notion of original intent is an enigma wrapped in an absurdity. A what? Are you trying to confuse me again? Oh, heavens no, dear Sarah. To put it simply, there was no such thing as an intent attributable to what you term the Founding Fathers, other than to unite the former colonies into a united bloc of states. 
Perhaps this phrase from the Declaration will provide some perspective. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. Well Buster, what would you know about that? I've had it with all this liberal, gotcha trickery, I think I know my constitution pretty well. And the founding fathers who came to Washington DC from Maine to Florida and Ohio knew what they were doing. What's more, they were good Christian conservatives who intended to keep your socialist liberals from taking control.